Hey everybody, here's a quick tour of the new Site Designer V3. Now, first let's start with the four control panels along the side because those are going to be the ones that you use the most. Now, the very first option we have here is the content pane. The content pane includes all of the page elements that you can use within your project. You can click on one to add it into your page, or you can drag and drop it onto the screen. Now, with an element in place, anytime you hover over it, you'll get presented with three items. Uh, the little A symbol allows you to edit the text. The double squares is for duplicating, and the little trash can obviously is to delete it. Elements within here um, include text, uh, media, um, interactions such as social icons, um, and containers for organizing multiple items. Any item you see that has a little down arrow, you can click on and will give you different variations. So for example, the headings, you can choose between heading one through six. Um, the paragraph gives you paragraph short, long, or medium. And uh, for the lists, you can choose unordered, ordered, um, uh, descriptive, and link. Within the con content pane as well, you also have the components. Components are pre-designed um, items that you can pull from our library. Yes, coming soon. Um, or you can save your own components uh, so that you can use them in other pages or in future projects. Um, it's as simple as selecting an item on your page, um, clicking create the component from the selection, and then it will save it up to your personal library. The third option under the content pane is the symbols. This one is pretty cool. Um, it allows you to keep common items in sync, such as your header or your footer. Now the second panel is our styles pane. The styles pane will be basically the command center for applying characteristics to any of your page elements. Um, at the top, it will always indicate what is selected at the time. So right now it's telling me I have a rule element selected. Let's go ahead and click on a heading because it'll give us some juicier options. So you can see the heading is now selected. Up at the top, you'll always still have that edit, duplicate, and trash icons available to you. The top section of this panel is for managing your um, CSS state selectors. You can apply an ID name. You can also apply a class selector. Um, and you can also um, adjust um, a special state selectors. Let me close that. Scrolling down a little farther, you'll have the ability to select um, which of the selectors you want to apply your styles to, whether it be the type, class, or ID, what state, if you want regular, hover, or, or out of view, and then also options for doing um, different states such as display grid or fallback. A reset option, if you ever want to reset any styles that you've applied, you can select them individually. Now, a little bit farther on the styles pane, um, the controls are divided into three sections. Um, they're divided into layout, design, and effects. The layout controls that you see will only be the, the ones that are only available to that specific element. So since we are currently on a header element, we only see the options for block and inline block, and then more such as hiding it at a, at a break point. Now, if we were on something such as a container element, let's go ahead and double click that container element, and we'll see that
I can now apply CSS grid capabilities. I can choose a flex box for my positioning, block and more. Below, it just goes even further. Um, you can do floats and clears. You can do um, uh, individual dimensions for width, height, um, setting max widths, um, adjusting um, the height. All of that stuff can be um, adjusted in different measurements. Now, for example, we see right now that the width is set to auto. If I click on that auto, it's going to give you a drop down where you can choose which method of measurement you want. So if you want to use percentage where you want the width to be 50%, for example, um, you would just click that and then it will adjust your, your measurement option. So see here we have 50%. And undo. Below that, we've got margin and padding to add space around your element. Fun fact while we're here, for centering content, if you do left, right, margin to auto, it will center the content. So if you've got a container or an image, um, basically anything, that left, right, auto usually does the trick. Below that, we have other positioning tools. Um, We've got sticky, static, um, relative, absolute, you name it, adjust the Z index. Um, you're also able to change um, for a multi-column layout, which is more print style. And finally, our new option for direction and writing modes, which will allow you to flip text in different directions. Now scrolling back up, let's go to the design section underneath the styles pane. I'm going to hide this just for clarity. So under the design section, again, we're only presented with the options for the, um, for the element selected. Here it is the container still. So we have only the background, border, shadow to be able to adjust. Um, so if we wanted to change the background, we would click the color wheel and then we can change the color, let's say to purple. Now, if we were to select, for example, the header element on our canvas, we would be presented with all of the typography controls for the font type, as well as, um, you know, alignment and color, transforming, adding a decoration, or text shadows. Again, you also still have the background, the borders and radius, um, and uh, shadow and being able to adjust the cursor as well. Now back up at the top, if we go to the effects section, we can um, apply a transition. Transition opens up so you can set duration and delay, and then you can select what property you want to that transition to apply to. And lastly, in the effects section, we have the transform and the filters and blend modes. Here you can skew and rotate how you want the, the content to look. Or in cases of the filters and blend mode, you can um, make cool um, CSS and filters for your, for your images. Now that is the styles pane. If we go over to the third panel, which is the element pane. Here you're going to see a full tree of all of the elements listed on your page. If you have a class or an ID applied to it, you'll also be able to see that listed here, um, which makes it pretty easy to identify which element you're looking at and want to style. If you double click any of the items in the tree, it will automatically open up the style pane for that particular element. Now more about the element pane. Um, you can click and rearrange items. So if you want to move stuff up, down, or nestle new things into different containers, you can do that just by clicking and dragging. Now the next section on the element pane is where you can apply the properties to the element. Um, if it's a link, you'll be able to add the link address here. Um, for uh, pictures, 
you can um, apply the picture source. If it's a social button, you would be able to add the reference to your social media page. If you're doing some interactive feature um, that you need the attributes, they would also be located here under the element properties. Um, they are framework specific, but they would be listed here. And finally, we have a CSS read-only view of the elements here. Um, so any element you select, all of the style CSS will be here that you can read over and, and see exactly what you've got applied. Now, finally, the fourth pane is the settings. This one's pretty straightforward. It's for adding um, your page information, like a title, description. Um, you can pack in some keywords, um, even add in scripts into your header and footer. Uh, my favorite is the favicon, uh, where you can add in a little icon that will appear um, on the browser tab. And so those are the four main panes. You'll be using them a lot. Now a little more with this, um, this uh, tour, I'm going to show you the slider. The slider allows you to click and view your page at different screen sizes. You'll notice as you slide over here to the left, you'll be able to see exactly what the size is. So in this case, it's 847 pixels. Now, I'm personally working on a pretty small monitor right now. So using the zoom controls over here on the left, I can zoom out and then I can see more of my page. So I can pull it out here and then I can now design for pages that are much larger, in this case, you know, 1356 pixels. And it also allows you to see more um, of the page vertically. Now, while we're talking about this slider, this is a good point to talk about the breakpoints. Um, the breakpoints are the dots that you see up at the top. They are framework specific. So I'm using a foundation um, base. So the breakpoints will be indicated in blue. These cannot be moved because they're built, baked right into the framework, so they don't let you. But let's say you want to make an adjustment um, that's custom outside of it. You can always use the plus and minus arrow directly to the left of the breakpoint bar to add in your own, or you can delete it. Little indicators here on the left-hand side will give you an indication of what type of um, device will be seeing your page at, at that particular spot. So I can see that when my slider is in this position, it's most likely going to be some kind of tablet or maybe small um, laptop viewing the page. Now, finally, in this overview, I'm going to quickly discuss the toolbar. This is all of our, um, uh, basically all the little quick tools that you may need. Uh, the design for allows you to add the media query for doing CSS grid. There's an option for structured data if you want to add markup for um, applying identifying tags to your content. The toggle breakpoints features allows you to turn off the breakpoints. This way you can apply styles without it being associated with a single breakpoint. This is really handy if you are on a small um, device um, such as myself because then you can work um, with the canvas extended um, while um, all of that being applied as a default. And go back to my default mode. You've got an icon that allows you to quickly grab um, a new theme if you want to start a different project. Um, manage your components or your project resources, such as your images. If you want to add new pages or manage the pages you already have, the pages icon will allow you to quickly see and select a different page in your project, or you can add and duplicate um, the page that you're on. It also gives you a project manage option if you need to rename any of your 
um, pages. The guides is next and that um, is pretty helpful. It can turn on um, where the drop points are so it kind of gives you a better idea of where items are um, laid out currently and where they can be placed. The preview option gives you a full preview so that you can work without having to uh, have that side panel in your way. Of course, there's also the preview on, which allows you to view your, um, your design in any of your um, installed browsers. And then publish, export, and then finally, um, general settings for, for the app, such as setting up your S drive configurations or naming your project and your export features. And there we have it. That's your overview of the Site Designer app.